heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine
promises that God made me that I'm standing on. And, and on Friday, he reassured me of one of those. He, he put it heavily in my heart, saying, this is going to happen, you know? Wow. As I was thinking about that, you know, Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the armor of God. But then verse 15 says, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we have to dig deep our feet into the ground, and we should not move from that position of faith no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter where our circumstances are. And while we dig our feet into the ground, we just stand there waiting for that promise to come to pass. Yes, sir. You know, we might, we might we might stumble, but there's a saying that, that goes, we will say wallow, but we won't fall down. So we might shake a little bit, but we're just going to be standing in there. But we, we know that we can count on each other too. Yes. You know, if you feel that you're starting to, your knees are starting to give in, you're starting to fall, of course we're going to turn to the Lord, but we can also turn on each other.
says, you know, you're going to do this. He doesn't say, I promise you're going to do it. No. He just said you're going to do it. He cannot lie. That's right. Amen. Now, everything in our life, you know, goes against a lot of those things. We know how people are, and somebody can tell you something one day and yeah. have total amnesia the next. I didn't say that. Yeah. God is not like that. And uh, I tell you what, I am, I'm excited. Yes. We're yes. living on the edge. This yes. is where we have longed to be. Yes, God. And I think of the apostles and how great it would have been to be in at their time. No, they longed to be in our yes. time. Yeah. Yeah. God, in the fullness of time, put all of us here yes. for this time. Yes. Right? There's a re we didn't just, you know, that we had nothing to do with when we came. He sent us here. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Right, yeah. Get excited. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt that the Hawkeyes are sent yeah. along. Yeah. 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 There we go. someone dies or something. Sometimes it's just their time. I don't know. But anyway, um, he had to go. Uh, he's had a lot of back problems and trouble with his hips. And he was told two years ago he needed his hips, both of them, replaced because of arthritis, degeneration, and different problems. So he finally got to the point where he went to a surgeon on Monday. And he called her Monday morning on his way. And she said, I am believing that what the doctor said two years ago is not true. And he said, well, you believe it, because I can't. And she said, can you just thank God for anything in your life? And he said, like what? She said, think of anything good. You've got two beautiful daughters, healthy, smart, anything that you can think of. And she said, I will be believing for a good report. Well, he called her about an hour and a half later, and he said, you know what? That surgeon said, I'm not sure why you're here because your new x-rays don't show that. <laughs> you know, there's something really different. He said, there's maybe a little arthritis, but he said, nothing that would lead me to say you need your hips replaced at 46, yeah. you know. And um, he was so excited. She said, well, what do you think about that? And he said, well, I thought I just thank God all the way. And he said, I 
just kept thinking, I hope Sarah's right. <laughs> Glory, yeah. So oh. God's good, and he is a healer. And, yeah. and if you oh, just God. have a teeny bit of faith, yeah. 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 we can't yeah. believe for each other. Yeah. Yeah.
very difficult for me, and I struggled with that for two meetings. Because it was the complete opposite of what he had said to me before. I'm taking care of this. So I finally took the step of faith, made the decision. But before that happened, I remember standing on this platform one day leading worship. Mike wasn't here that day. And we were singing a song called I Have Decided, which is basically based on that scripture. And I have made the decision that I was going to trust God and take his word and speak it over my life. Right. And that the direction that I was being led by the Holy Spirit was the right decision, even though it was going against everything that I had <coughs> stood for for two years straight. Do I regret making that decision? Not a single day. Am I sad for my wife when I got divorced? Yes. Does that mean it's the end of the world? still leave me a promise regarding that that I know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm believing that. Yeah. So just hang in there and know that we got you and you're not going to let you go. That's right. Right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. My sister-in-law uh, sent me a text and asked that we remember her in prayer. No traces of uh, cancer. She goes to the doctor tomorrow. And um, my friend Karen, she's her in prayer. She texted me last night about 8 o'clock and said, for the next two hours, there's this movie showing on WPFilms.com on your computer called The Finger of God. And so I was cutting my vegetables and trying to pick everything out of our garden before the freeze comes, you know. And I'm like, well, I'm in the middle of produce. And anyway, I thought, no, I need to go watch this. So I sat there and watched this. And man, it's just ph phenomenal. I mean, I could tell her faith was built. She, she's going through chemo, very, very ill. I finally got to see her this week. She just hasn't even felt like talking, hasn't felt like seeing people. But her faith was rising. I thought, you know, I need to do this, go watch this. And, I mean, it's just a phenomenal movie for the next. You go into WPFilms.com for, like, the next week or something. They're just showing these phenomenal movies about the fire of God that's happening all over. The, they're going to the bush. This one lady got up there, and she wouldn't even she wouldn't even begin to speak until the Lord told her, when that person comes that needs to be healed from being deaf, then you can speak. Until then, you can't. You can't preach. You can't start praying for people, nothing. So she just kind of, you know, speaking. And, of course, the deaf person can't hear, but they need to be up there. So finally, like after an hour, hour and a half, this lady comes up, and uh, they begin to pray with her, and her ears are open. And then she goes ahead and minister. But she said, I had to do this because... These people have never heard about the fire of God, the finger of God, the, 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 you know, the healings of God. And so they had to be proven that this is real, that I'm not some fake up here just doing something. So I mean, they're out, she's going through and saying, do you know this lady? Do you know for certain that she's deaf? Have you ever heard her know that? And, and so everybody's like, no, she's deaf. She's always been deaf. And I mean, ears were being open, eyes were being, even they even went to a community where there was this Muslim lady who was blind in one eye. And the preacher's trying to preach religion on this lady. you got to give your heart to Jesus. And this lady's like, no, we have to show them the love of Jesus. Forget trying to tell her that she needs to believe in Jesus. Right. She doesn't believe in Jesus, but she can feel our love coming through. And so she's kind of bantering back and forth. Thank God this person couldn't hear, you know, with just leave, leave it be. The Lord's going to do this. And then he'll, he'll do the rest, and he'll show her who he really is. Every time she gets sight in her eyes, she's going to say, you know, that wasn't my God. That was something else that happened. And the lady got healed. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, he was just saying, uh, that's what, you know, they were saying. Just love people, love people everywhere you yes. go. These people are just on the streets just ministering to people. And, and, and the Lord was saying, go pray for that person. They have this. Go pray for that person. They have that. And, I mean, people crutches. It, it was just, oh, it just blew me away. <laughs> I stayed up to like 11 o'clock thinking, is it over already? It was like two hours long, and I wanted to keep going on. But, you know, God's doing miracles, and we just need to be that outreach, that just a little finger, James saying an arm, you know, just, just a toenail, fingernail, whatever it is. All we have to do is just speak the word and believe in faith and show people the love of Christ. And, and I, I, I'm excited to hear, hear it happening here. And Karen just says, Sheila, I'm open to whatever, whatever, you know. So I was telling her about healing and about, you know, Dave and Patty Leahy or whoever. Because sometimes you just need a person there, I guess, just to, and so I was telling, you know, he's been dead, the Lord raised him from the dead, and she's like, I'm totally open, whoever wants to lay hands on me for this cancer, hey, there so, is. so, uh, 
she can't get out much. Her immune system's really weak, but we're going to keep praying for her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd love for Jane to meet up with her and share her testimony because yeah. we get faith from hearing other people's testimonies. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The word of God just, you know, uh, you've been healed. Hey, share it with somebody else so they can so they can reach on to your faith when they have none. Yeah. So, um, Evelyn, I went to see her yesterday. That little, uh, her her uh, son's uh, stepdaughter, who we prayed for, that had cancer and was going through chemo while she was pregnant, delivered the baby. The only side effect that the baby winded up having from that um, chemo that the mama was having was she was born with her right hand with only one thumb. But as far as everything else goes, the baby seems to be healthy. So we're thankful for that. And. Um, just continue to pray for that mom that she'll yes. be healed completely so yes. she can raise her baby. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. send her to the um, to the uh, home care, you know, or not home care, what's it? No, the other thing. Nursing you know, home. the nursing home, because when she went there last time, that's why she got in such bad shape. She wasn't cared for, given the right diet, wasn't, was pretty much neglected there. Mm -hmm. So that's why she's been in the hospital for so long right now. And she got staph infection and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But, um, so she needs prayer that her mom can get to 
you know, better and get to the point where she can come home yeah. and she can take care of her. So yeah. I just ask that we all pray for her too, you know, and also for their salvation. Yes. So yeah. and that could for be a sign and a wonder to them that God cares for them and yes. desires yes. for them and to, for them to know him. Yes. yes. difficult things for a person from a human perspective is to be alone and you know to me now that I am no longer married hint hint I'm kidding <laughs> um, I have to throw it out um, you know it's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard not to not to feel lonely, but I do know that I am not alone exactly. because you're my family yes. and God's always with me. Yes. And I'm so thankful not only for you, but also for my friends that are that are not here, um, especially the, the two ladies that that work with me. Um, you know, they basically treat me like I'm their son and they take care of me so good. And. They're actually coming over today because they're going to go do my grocery shopping for the week, and they're going to help me cook all the meals for the week and all that. And, you know, 
it's very exciting to know that I have all those people that care for me that well. And it's also very, very significant for, for my mom because it, it's, it's a reassurance for her knowing that there's people here that care for me and that can take care of me the way she would if she was here. Yeah. Thank God for that. <laughs> Public service announcement, please turn off or mute your phones. They tell you the same thing when you go to the movies. Why should that be any different? And that is actually very funny because I was thinking about talking to you about that just now. <laughs> so we're having our Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> you see, we're connected. On November 1st, after the service, and dogs and cats can be friends, as you can see. <laughs> Mine, mine's a loner. She won't get along with me. <laughs> Just me. Anyway, let's speak the word this morning. Will you now provide us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. As the worship team comes forth, we just lift up Susanna. She's uh, doing travels right now, and it was just her birthday, so I guess it's going to take her about a week and a half to celebrate her birthday. <laughs> so I don't know if it's fallout or just celebration or what, but um, just watch over, just watch over her. And uh, James, your birthday is tomorrow. Oh. Happy birthday, James! Because he's got a schedule going this afternoon, maybe the next week or two we'll we'll uh, get something together here for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Y'all ready? Yeah, he's all ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs>
end of the age when the earth you reclaim, you will gather the nations before you, and the eyes of all men will be fixed on the land who was crucified. For with wisdom and mercy and justice you reign at your Father's side. And the angels will cry, Hail to the Lamb who was slain for the world, ruled in power. And the earth will reply, You shall reign as the King of all kings and the Lord of
worship church. the Lord. Let's just lift our hands and worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Let our prayers come before you as incense, as a sweet savor to our God. We bless you, Lord. You are a great and a mighty God, Lord. There is no other God but you. You alone are God, and we worship you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' mighty name, praise the Lord. And everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, worship team. Great job, as always. Appreciate you allowing the Holy Spirit to use you and bless us. Praise the Lord, as well as the Lord. Amen. Sunday school can go downstairs if they haven't already bailed on us. Praise the Lord. Thanks again, everybody. We appreciate you being here today and celebrating the Lord with us. And Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. And I want to get right into the Word this morning. Uh, Praise the Lord. Give everybody a chance back there in the electronics department. Amen. To Praise God. I'd go back there and fix it, but I have a flip phone. Praise the Lord. And I'm just learning how to use it after eight years of the same phone. Praise the Lord. I've been notified by my cell phone provider that uh, I've been selected for an upgrade. <laughs> it's great news, but I'd have to take my youngest daughter with me to 
use it. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. God is good, isn't he? Praise the Lord. I said the other day, in the, I was doing a wedding for my granddaughter. I was talking about being in Arkansas. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And uh, I said then, you know, if we, if we really wanted marriages to last, if we believe that there's some kind of a contract, uh, then we should allow the cell phone companies to write those contracts and nobody would get divorced. Yeah. You can never get out of the contract. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But anyhow, God is good. Amen. And I'd like to begin with Psalms uh, 147, Psalms 147 and verse 11. Praise God. You know, uh, everybody here probably has uh, some miracle that they're looking for, or what we would define as a miracle anyway, something that we can't produce ourselves, something that we know that God wants for our lives, and there's no way we can make that happen. Only God can do it. That's a miracle. Amen? It's, it's supernatural. It's something that's beyond what the natural can provide. And that's really what I want to talk to you about. You know, God has tried to make this as simple. Paul said he preached the gospel, the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus. We've complicated this thing so much that all of us are confused, praise the Lord. But him. Amen? He's not confused. So he's still trying to get us to understand that this is not a complicated thing. It's just about trusting God. We've heard the testimonies uh, this morning, and uh, we're all looking for things to manifest that we have promises for, whether it was a direct promise that God spoke to you or is a promise you found here. In the, it's the same. It has as much validity, whether God speaks it to you personally or whether you find it in the Word of God and just stay claim there, amen, for that promise. Praise the Lord. So I, I want to talk to you about some of these things this morning. So the Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord. The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him or that honor him or are or, or awed by him, aware of him. Amen. In those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to Colossians now, if you will, Sheila. Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses 13 and 14. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption? That's not a question, by the way. It's, it's speaking of, uh, of the Lord, uh, of God. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Praise God. So, you know, one of the things that happens... Uh, for all of us, and we've talked about it many times, uh, and we all know it because it's a reality in all of our lives, that uh, we have questions sometimes uh, of whether God will do something that we know he can do, but we question whether he will do it or not because, you know, we may not be right where we need to be, spiritually speaking, in order for God to do it. Amen? That is a lie of the enemy. God doesn't do anything for us based on what we deserve or what we earn. He does it simply by grace. Everything is by grace. Amen. From salvation all the way through, amen, to healing, deliverance, prosperity, whatever it might be. It's all a part of the finished work of the cross. It's finished. Amen. So when you put your hope in God, you're really watching. You're really waiting and watching for God to provide a miracle on your behalf. Amen? When you put your hope in God, whatever that hope is for, it's really about your, your waiting and your kind of watching. This is what we've been sharing this morning. I've heard it multiple times already. For God to show up or for God to manifest a miracle on our behalf. Amen? To hope means to trust that God's got a plan, even though we don't know what the plan is. We know what he's promised. We don't know how he's going to manifest that or, or produce that in our life. And a lot of times we try to help him out and get in the way. Amen. We just, amen. So this is about 
hope is, is simply trusting that God has a plan for your life, that God has a plan for this particular situation, this particular miracle that you're waiting on. Amen. And he will bring it to pass. Praise the Lord. Look at this. In, let's look at this in Genesis chapter 22. We'll use this as, a, as an example. Uh, Genesis chapter 22, verses 13 and 14, Sheila. This is about Abraham. You all probably all know the story, and I won't go into it for the sake of time, but uh, Abraham had been told to take his son, his only son, the son that was the son of the promise, the son that God threw through this son, God was going to bless the entire earth. Amen? That all the peoples of the earth would be blessed because eventually through this lineage would come Jesus. Amen? To save man. Amen? So Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead or in the place of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen or it will be witnessed. Amen? So Abram hoped and trusted. Amen? And in the, in the outworking of God's grace, Jesus is the miracle we've been hoping for. This is a type of Christ, obviously, the ram, the lamb that was in the thicket. And so Jesus is the meaning of the promise in Genesis chapter 22. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Through Jesus, God reveals His mercy and justifies His grace. Praise the Lord. Now Jesus is the fulfillment of all of our hopes. You say, yeah, but I need a car, or, or I need a job, or I need a healing. Jesus is your healing. Yes. Jesus is your provider. Jesus is everything that you have need of, and that's why he's come to dwell in you, because out of you, amen, comes every promise of God. Amen? Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. But why? Because that river, the source of the river, if you will, is Jesus. He is in us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so he is the, the, the fulfillment of every one of God's promises to us who put our hope in him. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter one and verse 20. Now that's why the scripture says, you know, when all these things come to happen, you know, look up, your redemption draws nigh. Focus on Him. We're not supposed to be focusing on the junk, on the stuff that's happening, and which is what religion has us so bogged down and wrapped up in the particular bad thing's going to happen here, this thing's going to happen over there. Don't worry about it. Look up and behold. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the end of all that God has promised. He is the totality of everything that God has promised for each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. He became poor so we could become rich. Amen. He became the least that we might be the head and not the tail. Amen. He, he became sick and, and, and filled with our diseases and so on and so forth so that we, amen, could walk in divine health. Yes. Praise God. He became a human so that we could be gods. Amen. Sons of God. Amen. Little G. Amen. He came down and lowered himself and debased himself to become a human being yes. so that we could be elevated to be seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Jesus is the God-sent miracle that we are hoping for when we put our hope in God. Amen? That God would come near. That God would meet our need. That God would take care of whatever our situation and our circumstance is. God was way off. God is, is invisible. God is beyond all of us. But Jesus comes so that He is accessible. So that all of God's promises in Him are yea and in Him, amen. Praise God. Jesus is the miracle. Praise God. Psalms 39, verse 7. Now this is David. I love David. Not as much as Jesus, but I love David. No, I mean, we always are looking for somebody that we can feel better about ourselves because of <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. So now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in 
you. Praise the Lord. All right, let's look at this one too. Psalms 146 and verse 5. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. I don't, have you ever wondered, would David even be allowed in most of our churches, praise the Lord today, if we knew everything that we know about him now, and we knew it then, would we even want him sitting on a pew next to you? Okay, well, we know, so it's not right. It's not really fair to ask the question, obviously, because you know you're not supposed to give the wrong answer, right? Praise the Lord. But David doesn't just have an affair. He lusts, he covets, he fornicates, he lies, he kills a guy or has the man killed. I don't know, I've I got to tell you, I've known some pretty despicable people. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I don't know that I've ever met anyone as sinful as David. He breaks half the Ten Commandments in one single episode. I mean, just one thing. And he doesn't repent until he's busted. I mean, it wasn't like he just got, you know, a revelation, this was really bad, and please forgive me, Lord. No, not, it wasn't until that prophet and his long bony fingers stuck his finger right in his face and said, you're the man, you're, you're the guy. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I'm going to just make this real simple. That is Jesus. It's not the stuff. It's not the thing. It's Jesus. David deserves judgment. I mean, anybody, anybody that was a family member to Bathsheba or to Uriah, her husband, would have said, hey, something needs to be done about this guy. I mean, he killed my brother. He killed my son. My, right? He's having an affair with his wife. Praise God. But God rips open heaven to reach down and touch David not just with a pat on the head or not with a slap upside the head, but with his delight. He delighted in David. Why? Because David hoped in his mercy. Praise the Lord. God eagerly, not reluctantly, not with twisting of the arm, not with pleading and begging, but God eagerly forgives David for his sin. And it's buried at the bottom of the sea, David says, where it can never be found, where it can never be remembered again. Praise the Lord. Let's look at this. Psalms 23 and verse 6. Last verse, I think it is. Uh, whatever. The sixth verse. Psalms 23. Surely goodness and mercy, this is David speaking, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you look up that word follow, it's actually, the word is redaf in Hebrew. And it means to pursue, or to hunt, or to chase. So David hoped in God, and God chased him down, and miraculously blessed him and saved him. Praise the Lord. Surely, if you hope in the Lord, goodness and mercy will chase you down, find you, and bless you. Hallelujah. That's what God does. Hallelujah. That's, that's the way our God really is. Amen. No matter how sinful, no matter how guilty you might feel or be, no matter what miracle you need today, 
hope in God. Jesus is equal and, and more so to whatever the, the, the job of rescuing or restoring or providing demands. He is exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Hope in Him because He's more than enough to take care of whatever your miracle need might be. Say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In Luke chapter 7, and we'll go there in a minute if Sheila wants to go there. I'll just kind of give you a paraphrase of this. In Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50, is a story, and it's about multiple people, but it's about this Pharisee who's named Simon. And he invites Jesus to come for dinner. And right in the middle of the meal, this sinner woman, this prostitute, this outcast, as far as the religious people are concerned, barges in with this alabaster box of perfume or ointment, whatever it might have been, and she weeps over the feet of Jesus. And then she wipes his feet dry with her hair. And then she anoints his feet with this ointment, with this perfume. Look at, let's just read verses, uh, Luke 7, verses 37 and 38, or 37 through 39 is fine. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with oil. And when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, or invited him to dinner, saw it, he said to himself, this guy, if he were really a prophet, if he were really from God, he would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him. She's a sinner. Everybody knows she's a sinner. Amen? Praise the Lord. What Simon didn't consider was that she had hoped in God. Praise the Lord. Luke 7 uh, 44 through 48. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, See this woman? I entered into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet, but she's washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You, you didn't kiss me. You didn't greet me. But this woman, since the time I came in, hasn't ceased to kiss my feet. Praise the Lord. Verse 48, I'm sorry. And he said unto her, Your sins are forgiven. Because much forgiveness produces much love. Praise the Lord. What we don't understand sometimes of people that uh, we, all, we usually say, you know, people that are, when they first get saved, they're just on fire for God. Well, they are, but they are because they can't believe in the goodness of God and the mercy of God, that he would forgive them, that, that they're, what they think is the worst thing in the world, God has forgiven. Amen? What everybody else saw as great failure and, and horrendous behavior, God forgives. Because somebody hopes in His mercy, in His goodness. Psalm 71 and verse 14. We're still talking about our miracles. Amen? Psalm 71 verse 14. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Amen? Psalms 42, verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And by the way, the help of his countenance, what is the countenance? That's... Your expression, that's your face, right? God is invisible. The only countenance God has is Jesus. Right. That's what he's talking about here. David is saying, 
I will yet, I, I'm going to put my hope in you because I'm going to praise you for the help of the Messiah. David knew the promise for your presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 11, same chapter. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Hallelujah. So here's the confidence that you need. The question isn't can or will Jesus forgive or produce the miracle that you need. The question is, how long do you intend to wait to shout the praises of God? And how loud will you shout them, given all that he has promised? Amen? The song we sang up here is about praising. You know, if we wait till the manifestation to praise... It's not praise. It's thanks. It's praise when it's just about what you're hoping for and believing that God will produce it. It's called faith. It's not complicated. We think faith is a big, deep, you know, all of Faith is hoping in what God has promised and believing that we will see it and praising him before the manifestation. Praise God. David understood it. And it made him a man after God's own heart. Because through Jesus, our hopes are fulfilled and God's promises are kept. Praise the Lord. Through Jesus. That's why every time we're confronted with something, we're to look to Jesus. We're to behold him. Praise the Lord. He is, amen, the substance of things hoped for. He's the substance. Amen. He's the car. He's the house. He's the loved one saved. Amen. He's the financial breakthrough. He's the 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 restoration of your health. He is the substance of whatever it is you're hoping for. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Whose faith saves us? Jesus. He's the one that had the faith his way through the cross, through the death, burial, and resurrection. Amen? So when we hope, amen, our faith is manifested. Faith is the substance of what we're hoping for. Amen? When we're hoping, faith comes. Faith shows up. It's Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of what we don't see. All I got to do is find the promise. And then all I got to do is say, thank you, Jesus, because in you, all the promises of God are yea and amen. Hallelujah. You've already done all of those things. They're already available. I just got to shout the praises to God. Amen. For the substance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah of whatever we've been hoping for. Praise God. Faith is the substance. God rescues us through our rescuer, Jesus. Hallelujah. He blesses us through the blessed one. Praise the Lord. He provides for us through the provider, the lamb caught in the thicket. Praise the Lord. Not only did it take away the, 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 the image of no promise being fulfilled, because if I kill this kid, it's all over. He provides a substitute. And not only does he provide a substitute, He provides everything that Abraham needs. If you read on, it it says, and Abraham was blessed beyond anyone at that time. And his seed became 
like the stars of the sky, stars of the heavens, and the sands of the sea. Now, he, it would have been easy for him because God, he had a promise, but it didn't look like the promise was going to be manifested the way Abraham thought it should be. We are, he's already been down this road twice because yeah. of Ishmael. He had a promise. Then he tried to produce the manifestation of that promise. And he screwed it up. Yeah. But did God stop? Did God take back the promise? No, it just took him a little longer to get the promise because he was trying to help. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, well, you know, we do that because we think we know this, this, will work. It, this worked before. I've done this before, and I know I can do this, and I know I can be, you know, help God out here, and this, probably this is what God wants to do. No, usually it, when God does it, it's so counterintuitive that we think it must not be God. That's a screw-up. That's going to really mess us all up here, and we're not going to get where, where, where we need to go. We're not going to get what it is we have to have. Yep. Amen? I mean, this looked like he was not only not going to get the promise, he was going to be guilty of destroying the promise. Yep. Amen? But it wasn't the case. He hoped in the mercy of God, and God didn't let him down. Praise the Lord. Our hopes are fulfilled by Jesus in every promise that God has given us. Amen? Colossians chapter 1 again. Let's go back to that where we began. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's how grace works in every area. It's all God and us hoping us putting our trust, our faith in him, and he does it. Hallelujah. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So God promises to rescue and transform our lives and our hope for a miracle, right? Right? They're both manifested in the life and the finished work of Jesus. Amen? We're, re we're rescued, we're transformed, and whatever miracle we have hope for, it's all in the finished work of Christ. Everything, whatever it is you're, 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 you're hoping for, you're waiting for, amen? Jesus is the incarnation of the outworking of God's grace. Amen? He's a tangible thing that shows us God's grace. Yes. Grace and truth came in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. So he is the incarnation of all of God's promises, all that God's outworking of grace yes. to us. Yes. Praise the Lord. So when it comes to our life experiences, when it comes to just living the life, this outworking grace moves us from putting our hope in God alone to looking to Jesus. My hope is in God, so I look to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, the provider of every need that I have. Amen? The healer, the deliverer. Amen? Given a name above all of these names. Above Jehovah Jireh. Above Jehovah Shalom, above Jehovah Sidkenu, above, above all of the names of God, He has a name. Yes. And, it, and it represents and surpasses every one of these identifications of God. Yes. Every promise of God to be your provider, to be your peace, yes. to be your victory, to be your healer, to be your deliverance, is in Him. Yes, yes. and amen. Praise God. It's all in Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God. All right, Psalms 33 and 18 through 22. Psalms 33, 18 through 22. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, 
to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Praise the Lord. Abraham looked at Isaac and he trusted in the Lord. Amen? Look, let's look at this again. Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Amen? On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Right? Abraham looked, and he saw the provision. Now, this happens on Mount Moriah. And Mount Moriah isn't mentioned again in the Bible until Solomon, who comes to build the temple. Amen? Second uh, Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, and in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Oman, the Jebusite. Where? David's mountain. Where? Abraham's mountain. Praise the Lord. For centuries prior to this and for centuries after, countless animals would be sacrificed while these people hoped in God for acceptance, for forgiveness, for provision, for all that they had, for righteousness, for the unclean to be clean. Praise God. God promised those who hope in him that on the mountain of the Lord it would be provided. Praise the Lord. Not by your effort, not by our works of righteousness, but by our hope in his goodness. And by his grace alone, we experience the miracles. We hope in the promise, and God provides. God does it. We don't do it. We can't do anything to earn it. Our job is simply to hope in God. Whatever it is you're confronted with. You're, you, you know, you can't, you can't ever get good enough to deserve what God wants to grace you with. The only thing you can do, the only thing God asks of us is to hope in his goodness. Amen? Yes. To hope in his mercy. To hope in his honesty, his faithfulness, his, his uh, inability to say one thing and do another. Whatever your promise, hope in the goodness of God. It has to come to pass. And it can only come to pass by God himself. You can't do it. If you could do it, we would have already done it. Amen? Whatever it is, what, you'd already have it. Praise the Lord. You hope in his goodness. Amen? Now here's something I just heard the other day. So this isn't unique with me, but it's worth repeating because of the context that, that we're in here. Religion has, has put the onus back on us, which is a heavy burden that nobody can bear. We can pretend. I mean, we can act like we're really spiritual and that we're really under this great burden. But the truth is, he's already bore our burdens. He's taken all the heat, all the pressure, all, the, all, all of the the questioning. You think, you, you think as a man 
that Jesus didn't question? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's already gone through your questions. He's already dealt with your doubts. Yes. Hallelujah. He is the fulfillment. Yes. He is the substance. Praise God. You don't get it by doing. You get it by hoping and believing yes. in what He has already done. Right. Amen? Now I'm gonna sh uh, I'll share this with you. Leviticus chapter 13. Verses 12 uh, and 13. You know, uh, one of the first things, one of the first metaphors that I learned in Scripture 40 years ago, 35 years ago, whatever it was, was that leprosy was a type of sin. So wherever you see leprosy in the Scripture, it's, it's a metaphor for, for sin. It's the result, you know, of sin. So... So under the law, if a person had leprosy, they had to go show themselves to the high priest. And only the priest could declare them clean or unclean. Remember when Jesus healed the leper, he said, go show yourself to the priest? So they'd have validation within the community so that they could come back in to uh, the culture and, and back in with the community. Because they're ostracized, they're, they're quarantined, amen, as long as they have leprosy. They were unclean. It's a type of sin. Amen? So here have, if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall, be, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white, he is clean. Now it's just the opposite of any kind of rational thinking. Because if you got a little leprosy, that can't be as bad as being totally leprous, can it? It's again, look at the metaphor. So you say, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a sinner, but I'm not like David. I'm only like a 20% sinner. 80% of my life is pretty good. You know, I mean, I, I do good stuff, and I and I'm not doing a lot of bad things. So it's an 80-20. I'm 80% clean. I've only got 20% leprosy. You're a leper. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, I'm 50-50. I'm you know, I mean, I, I really love the Lord, and I try, and I try to do, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm back and forth. No. You're a leper. You're a sinner. I'm 99% good. Just a little leprosy. And you can't even see it. It's in a place where it's not really visible. Unless I reveal it. Right? No, I'm, I'm a leper. But if I'm completely covered, I'm clean. Because I can't do anything about it. It's not a mixture. It's not some good, some bad. I'm all bad. And because I've come to that conclusion that in and of myself there is no good thing in this flesh, amen, that only God can deliver me, that only God can accept me, amen. So I need to come to some point in my life where I just say, I'm all leprous. I'm completely sinner. And then God can pronounce you clean. Because only He can cleanse. Only He can heal. Only He can deliver you from sin. You can't do it, and you can't do it a little bit at a time. You can't get better and better at it. You're either a sinner or you're not. You're either completely in sin or you're completely out of sin. Hallelujah. And Jesus is the high priest that we've come to show ourselves to, and we have to get to the place where we finally come to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm just a sinner, and I can't do anything about it. I've tried to get it. I've, I've got it down to about 20% here, but I've still got some problems. I've got it down to 10. No. Nope. You're unclean. Come back when you're completely sinner. Then I can pronounce you clean. Then my grace takes over. Because there's nothing in and of yourself that can make it happen. Hope thou in him. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. He's the deliverer. He's the healer. Grace alone brings the manifestation. Hope in God. Trust in grace. Experience your miracle, whatever it is. He will provide because he already provided. He did it on the mountain of God. The miraculous mountain of grace. What did God say to Zerubbabel? Just shout. Grace! Grace! Shout to your mountain. Why? Because God had been shouting from the mountain for a millennium. Grace to you. Grace, grace. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Next time the enemy tries to beat you up with you're not exercising enough faith, you, you just don't have enough faith, just say, I'm hoping in God. He's my substance. And he shall bring it to pass. Even as he has spoken. Amen. His word is forever settled in heaven. He's just waiting for somebody to hope in that reality on earth. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. No sickness, no disease, no poverty, no sin, no judgment. It's rejoicing and praising God. Hallelujah. The next time the enemy comes and tries to steal your promise, just say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It, it causes heaven to rejoice and the enemy to run in terror. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give the Lord another hand clap. He's good. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. Amen. All the time. Believe. And believe big. Because you can't outbelieve the goodness of God. Amen. God bless you. All are dismissed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a sign-up sheet back there for the Thanksgiving dinner on the 1st. Anybody that wants to bring, let us know what it is so we're not duplicating everything. And I'd like to talk.